had open source processes, how open source is done, and how we can apply to a startup or to a company that more focus on, on the issue of startups. It's a bit condensed, it's not technical at all, it's more going to try to explain you this uh, kind of tools. And, and kind of interest you about it, about them, so you can really like uh, afterwards kind of get into it more in detail if, if you find them interesting. So I'm Leo Lara. I've been doing software all my life. I have been like uh, I wrote my first program when I was eight years old. Very small program. I, uh, I wrote myself. Um, I always have been like with computers. Especially interested on internet, um, uh, scalability, etc. My previous job, job was uh, a car, that's a major designer. There I, I, I was working on server software on an arm, and I kind of like, did some things like what is hip, the Facebook hip hop pitch pitch that was compiled to arm, interfering building blocks, there is a different library. And there I met a lot of, uh, they were working there a lot of Linux kernel developers. And I kind of like, uh, through this experience of, of like, the, I was working next to them, like, they, like, I was really amazed for how this huge software with some vast amount of people working on it is done distributedly about internet. And that's kind of like, led me to this uh, kind of this kind of led me to this kind of, uh, kind of reflection. And I'm now a co-founder of few Places uh, with amazing people. We are an uh, international team. Now the, the latest not here, the latest incorporation is from France. We have people from England, Spain, Argentina, Slovenia and Portugal. Uh, most of them call Miguel. And what do we do at the places? We help uh, international students to find, especially international students, but also international students to find accommodation and to book them online, like before they before they arrive here to study. To now we are in Portugal and Chile, but we are going to. Uh, I don't talk more. Oh. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Source code is very important. I guess like well, you know, this is a talk about this piece, so I guess no, I don't have to. Is it much about like the importance, like the quality of the source code impacts all the whole product uh, at all levels? So like the maintainability of the uh, and the stability of the source code is, is bad. You kind of not, not go. You, it's more difficult for you to go in a kind of lean, more agile approach if you don't have that. So it's kind of the source code is very important. Well, we are all engineers, so we know that. How well like source code have been managed traditionally like because it's very important so we, we, we need software to manage it in general before the 80s there weren't really many software to manage it so the, 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 this was like collaboration of, on, on source code <coughs> are, like we share FTP servers like people that some people still now are still calling that way like we share, with a share folding on FTP and kind of changing files and if you have, have this have a huge problem, that is when two people are modifying the same file, one of the two changes are, are lost. Uh, to solve this problem and others, the, in the in the 80s, a period that was used, this uh, CDS was used for most of the 80s and 90s was the most important. Uh, <coughs> and this, this, this software CDS that kind of like keep a history of the changes and to avoid like people changing the same file and kind of messing it up, the, the, the files are locked. So if I'm going to modify a file, I have to lock this, this file, and then no one else can, modif can modify until I unlock it. This had the, the obvious problem that if someone left uh, for, for the night and, <laughs> and didn't unlock the, the file, so like crazy things happen. Yeah. What's that huge problem? For this kind of problem, the uh, version and similar uh, software um, appeared. Like the, 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 really the, the huge uh, jump in subversion was to that automatically was able like like allow people to work on the same files at the same time and automatically was merging the changes 
when it was possible. And sometimes you have to resolve conflicts because they happen, but it, it really does the, the, the shift of this kind of software subversion is like it allows like, like automatically <coughs> so subversion, yeah, so subversion solved this problem of triple compound. Uh, this like when really big source, open source projects came along, uh, this wasn't really enough for them. Uh, it's, it's very different from the, what the, we were used to. Like the, the, the people all around the world, and especially anyone might want to contribute to your to your project. But you don't know that you cannot give them like great access to your special repository. So usually this is starting being like there were mailing lists or somewhere to post patches, to post to post diffs of the of your changes, and the people had to kind of uh, in the internal discussion and kind of like manually mesh those those those, um, those patches. So the only the, the kind of like the core developer had access to, to the to the subversion repository and they have to go through this uh, manual process to allow people, anyone like uh, to, to give contributions. And the, the, the open source then it produced like kind of this concept of, of branches, people like kind of developing a feature that diverge sometimes a lot from the main version of the on the on the on the of the source code and then trying to merge back to into the into the main project. They also appear forks and, and like like they are kind of like separated projects that are related with the, with the like kind of um, New projects that search from from other project kind of continue continue in a different path, etc. So it's kind of like develops like this very non-linear approach to to develop software in a very distributed way, and kind of this um, this the, the subversion approach, kind of this kind of approach didn't think really uh, did the job for them. Then it comes like like Linux kernel. To give you some context, well, everyone, I guess everyone knows like, Linux, like it's done by Linux Torvalds, and it's probably the, the biggest open source project. Now it's like more than 11 million lines of, of code. Like every day, like, 10, this is our old data, so probably now it's more. 10,000 lines are added to, to, the, to, the, to the Linux kernel, 5,000 removed, 2,000 changed. And they, in this version, in, in 2630, there were more than 1,000 engineers working on the kernel, and they say, like, working on the kernel and contributing and sending patches and, and supported by, by many companies. Like, the, the, it's, it's really, 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 the, we're talking really, really huge numbers. And uh, when I learned more about this, I was amazed how is this possible, how this really happened without the without um, and produce a stable software. So how this is done, so there are many, many branches so, um, and forks that try to explore perhaps new features or like kind of a better memory management system, etc. And on the top is, is Linus that he personally kind of veto all the all the all the patches that are included into the kernel and produce like what is called mainline vanilla kernel. From, from, from those patches, that can, he cannot really uh, look uh, at everything that everyone is generated. So under him, he has like some uh, maintainers that maintains part of the of the of the Linux code, and so the, this generate what is called like like uh, upstream, like trying to get something upstream. So so the, the people that are contributed to the to the kernel, kind of to these maintainers. Send their patches in the mailing list that are for each of these components. Send the patches. Then they start like discussions that sometimes get very long and very complicated. Um, and 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 then they might get accepted into the component fork, or uh, and and then the those are going to, to Linux that eventually merge them after checking them. So. Actually, what makes a maintainer, a component maintainer, is that uh, Linux 
is going to accept like and look at their at their patches that are actually like kind of the the, the patches that have, they have accepted for, from other people from from, from all these more than one thousand developers. So this is like and this in all this process is all about code review, like looking at code, discussing about code. And, and what is the problem with your code? You have to do it this way if you want this accepted. And these people are working for a company that want that working on the kernel, so they have to rework it. And it's kind of like a lot of time on the on of the of the kernel developer is spent working in all this process of, of discussing about about source code. So then. What happened? Why? What is like? What the software they use to manage all this complexity? What is that? The, 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 the one of the point of this uh, presentation. So, so first, the, the like Linux servers <coughs> thought that it's, they were non. After looking, like they were non uh, software that could really manage all this process. So they, they, it was being done manually with divs and patch and and, and the mailing list. And then in, in, in 2002, there, there was this BitKeeper. There is a proprietary software for 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 um, for um, software configuration management. And they were starting BitKeeper, and that, that generated a huge polemic because it's like this Linux is open source, and some people thought it was like very bad to use a proprietary software. Some people tried to start cloning like a compatible version with BitKeeper, like an open source compatible version with BitKeeper. The BitKeeper people didn't like it, and then like kind of suspend the license for using BitKeeper in the Linux kernel. And then in, in the month of April 2005, in that month, in one month, Linux personally he grew Git. So from all this learning, all this huge software engineering process that is the Linux kernel, kind of all this got the summarized on hello. Send him by the other door. <laughs> 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 Online, they, they are like their own repositories 
uh, itself. So it, this allows to do nonlinear development. So, so it has this, this concept of push and pull. So you can kind of like say this branch from this computer or the server merge it into this other branch in this other computer in, 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 in this other server. That's push or like pull, like merge into my own uh, repository from this other repository, this, this branch. And then this allows to, on top of this, you, you can really build many different workflows. Work so that results in that this is useful to work for one people to more than 1,000 as we saw with the, with the Linux kernel. So this is different with the um, uh, workflow that you can use like using the same software but uh, just like using different kind of dynamics in, in, inside the team. So, so it would be like, like the, the first one where there is only you and perhaps you have in your computer your Git repository or even perhaps you have a copy in a server or, or only in your computer so that would be like for one people then you can have like this kind of model that is more similar to to subversion that is each developer has a repository a git repository in, in his computer and then there is online like or, or, or in the in the network there is a shared uh, repository so these these arrows can be push and pull so these developers can say I want to merge this branch from my local repository into that repository or that will be a push or a pull I want to merge this branch from this repository into my local repository then for example we can follow the, this model if we want to have like, like incorporate like a, a quality assurance into the process <coughs> so each developer has its own public repository on, online and uh, its own repository in the computer because you, you need uh, always to have like in your like, mm -hmm. repository in your computer to, to work on the source code uh, and then like, like and there is like a like the kind of like the stable version so it, all developers would, would, would pull from the stable version and would work would make changes and then like kind of push to the public repositories kind of like to share it among the, the, the other participants and then like the, the kind of the quality assurance like the, the, the building process would kind of pull to uh, another repository where is all the tests are done and only when the tests are, are, are passed it, it's, uh, it's, it's all merged so it's kind of integrated and then when when all the tests are passed, then it's, it's, it goes to the, to the stable repository. And then, for example, we have this other model that is like the kind of like the Linux kernel uh, model. So it is this like blend repository that is like the mainline vanilla kernel. The developers kind of get from from there from from the, get, uh, get the changes, the new the new stuff, the new versions from there. And then they kind of they send the, they, they send the changes to the uh, component maintainer in repository, and he will like kind of veto it and, and kind of uh, decide what is what should be accepted or what is not, and then it's sent to the one person that kind of like decide uh, eventually and integrates all the things together. So this is how we see this. We, we can. We can grow from one one developer to a few to kind of like quality assurance systems, kind of like 1,000 engineers. We could even potentially have more levels here or whatever. It's like it's so flexible that really um, helps you scale one of the things that, 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 that have that. So and then comes Vika. That have been amazing. Have been a revolution. It's a, an amazing startup that have been without funding for most of its life and the, the, the first time they raised money was 100 million because they have been having profit like all the way uh, they, they, they see that all this is about source code but it's also about people interacting about source code so they, they say okay let's make let's make a social network on top of git on top of the on top of these uh, code tools 
So it's kind of like like you have like the West two, you have this key hosting help service with a web tool to, to manage your public uh, GitHub repositories. It also incorporates task management and then like it's very useful and it's kind of like it's also a social network. So each developer has like its own persona in, in GitHub with its own repositories and you kind of generate a stream of the things you do the, the, in with the with the source code there. So it's, it's really good for, for open source, it's actually free for all, for open source, so you kind of you don't want to keep like your source code private is is free. And kind of like uh, led to a lot of uh, explosions in open source development, and uh, it's very good for a startup, for because you can have all these tools and all these processes that that scale very well from one to one thousand engineers uh, in a software as a service, and kind of like with the, you, you are probably using open source software, and it kind of helps you a lot to interact with that open source software that you are using. So for example, we kind of like sometimes fix bugs in open source software we, we use. And then instead of like keeping the fix for us, like we just send it and they maintain by, by them and we are already in GitHub all the time, so it's really convenient. Um, so and this kind like this social network that is like like the, the talking and Sending code and discussing about code and etc. <coughs> and have this amazing feature that is probably the most useful addition to just the having Git that is the pull request that allows you to ask people to kind of change their like like accept your your patches and kind of discuss about that session and that's kind of that process that is done in mailing lists is kind of done in a better usable way through pull request. So this is like kind of like a home page of GitHub a bit all and like now they update a bit. So it's like you have like a timeline with what people are doing with tasks, with with comments on source code, with pull requests, etc. The people you are kind of connected, you have like uh, connection with your, your repository, etc. It's like so you can send messages, you can Talk to yeah, we kind of collaborate around software, or the, you can really go to any open source project that is in GitHub and kind of uh, make a make a bug uh, bug require um, bug notification, and then that that bug notification is linked to a pull request. Uh, if you you kind of you can you can in the commits of Git you kind of can close. Uh, task in the in the task management system, etc. So it, and this is a pull request. This is part of a pull request. It is longer. So what you what you have is like uh, you, you, if there is a project in GitHub, you have like the main repository, and then every all the developers make their own what is called fork. So it's kind of like the, their own copy of the repos of the of the source code, but in their own user account, and then when they need to make a modification, they create a branch in the local repository in their computer. They can they they send it, they push it to their uh, kind of uh, repository in GitHub, the, and then they made a pull request and they ask so they, they, their 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 branch to be merged into another branch of the main repository. And then this kind of page gets created with the difference. And then you can like start a discussion about it, even in one line, kind of discuss what is what is this here, blah blah blah. And kind of like make it much easier to to, to add these contributions. Um, eventually like if you keep adding commits to your branch and pushing them, they, they show up here the, the new modifications. And eventually, when everyone agrees that it's okay, there is a button and kind of gets merged into the repository you are trying to to get your your modifications in. So this is what internally in many places we do this. So we do peer review of all the code through this process, and it's very thanks to GitHub, it's very easy, it's very fast. Um, so it really GitHub. For a startup or for any organization, really puts 
in the center the, the source code and the discussion about the source code that the engineers need to have all the time and, and help you organize the, the work around. Uh, it's really easy to use for people distributed around, around the world and that's, it's the fact that this is being used by many open source projects that with people really that the all or spread out around the world uh, with, with much success. And really, if you need to outsource like something to, to a kind of a engineer in another country, you just give them access to their GitHub account to your repository and they have access to the source code. They can send you the, the modifications, you can kind of screen them and tell them what they, they need to do on, on top of that. So, if you want to learn more about Git, is um, this online book, it's, it's free. Although there is a hard copy you can buy, but it's very good, it explains everything about Git. And there you have uh, GitHub. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.